Hi, my name is Jackie Lee Price and welcome to Shadow Boxing. Hi and welcome uh, to Echo Essiman. Let me just turn off. <laughs> yes. the, the dog is trying to join in. <laughs> yeah. There's no one in the cheap seats. <laughs> 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 How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. And you? Yeah, I'm really well, thank you. So you <laughs> have been busy lately, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been a busy boy. Do you want to tell us about uh, your new bit of news? I know it's already gone out, but uh, maybe my viewers haven't seen it. Yeah, I um, recently signed with Frank Warren, um, ahead of my... Um, possible British Eliminator clash with uh, Liam Taylor. So, yeah, over the moon about that and been putting the work in and the groundwork to cause a scene when boxing starts again. You're grinning from ear to ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does it feel like, finally, somebody's, you know, after doing the whole um, small hall shows where there's nothing wrong with them, we know everyone's dream is to get on those big bills. Does it feel like now I've reached? Yeah, yeah, it definitely feels great because I've been, I've, 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 like, everyone has to go through the small hall shows to appreciate um, going through, going up through the levels <laughs> and, and whatnot. I've done it in the amateurs and went up to the levels to box on the GB squad. So, and I wanted to replicate that as a pro. And um, I feel like I'm at that point where, I deserve to be moving up to the next stage of things because I have started at the small hall shows and um, I've built up my ranking. I've got my English title. I've put myself in the position to be put for a British Eliminator because I deserve it and not just because, um, yeah, I'll, yeah, I was on the GB squad, so let's give him give him an Eliminator. No, um, I actually I've just fought my way there, um, so it's not something handed to me. I've taken it with both hands and I can't wait to take the opportunity with both hands as well. No, it's good. It's interesting, um, talking about you being on the GB squad, I mean, that that can help and hinder you though, can't it? If you don't go off to say like the Olympics or something like that, you yeah, effectively yeah. started at the bottom in the pros, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, because, um, well, originally I wanted to turn pro um, a lot earlier, but then I got the um, the call for for um, the trials for the GB squad. And that took six months to actually, like, because it was um, between me and 40 other boxers. And at the end of the six months, it was between me and another lad and I got the nod. And then obviously um, after that, the next goal was, all right, start getting medals. So I started getting medals and I was thinking, I could turn pro now, but I'm halfway through my Olympic cycle and the Olympics are coming up. What's the point turning pro halfway through when you can turn pro after the Olympics. So obviously that ended up becoming my goal. Like I'll go to the Olympics and then I'll turn pro. But then last minute um, I lost out to Josh Kelly and just went pro straight away. As soon as I found out I wasn't going, I just went pro because there was nothing for me left to do in the amateurs. Mm. I mean, that's interesting that you say that because I know that some people, they stick on GB and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. They, they yeah. maybe do a couple of cycles and then try to go pro and it doesn't necessarily always work, does it? So do you feel no, like you got out at the right time? Um, ideally, I wanted to get, I would have wanted to get out earlier, but um, I will never, uh, I'll never second guess um, the choice that I made because I feel like uh, my time on GB definitely got me the um, uh, experience sort of boxing with high-end Olympians and world champions and not being out of my debt. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be involved. That's what he's like. His name is Prince and he definitely acts like one. <laughs> he's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I feel like my, um, my experience on GB has definitely helped build me in terms of um, being a boxer and my boxing brain and whatnot. And, um, yeah, I never turned that down because I feel like I've always had a pro style and I even got told that when I was on GB that everyone used to always mention the fact that I had uh, my 
style was more was better suited to the pros. Um, and also the way I fought, because um, that's how I got coined up with the name The Engine. I used to start off nice and steady, and then I'd, I'd pick it up whilst I was warmed up, and I'd keep going and keep going. And so one of the coaches used to be like, you've got a good engine, because you start, it's like you start slow for an amateur, yeah. but you just but you, you do the opposite. Other amateurs start fast, slow down. You start semi-alright, and then you just speed up, speed up, speed up, and it gets gets worse for your opponent. So that's how they, and that's how they coined the name, yeah. It's a brilliant name, but I just want to make a point about that because I have seen quite a few amateurs start towards the end of their career. They're still trying to go for the ABA titles, etc., and they start training with a pro coach and then yeah. they start to slow down. And of course, that's what, not what we need in the amateur game. But like yeah. you said there, you were the opposite. You've kind of just grown into the fight, but by that time, it's kind of over, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing about um, say, say having a say a pro versus an amateur, and also when pros used to spar amateurs, it's like as an amateur, you'd get the better of a pro for the first few rounds, and then all of a sudden the table the, the tables would turn, and you'd be like, yeah. he's, he's he's hit me with a good shot. I, I'm starting to slow down. This, this this is I don't like this, but that's what but. As a pro, you kind of, as a pro sparring amateurs now, I'm thinking, haha, you, you think you're good, you think you're cool, all right, just wait. It's it's going to be in my favour anyway, so yeah, you just weather the storm and then take it to them. It's true because I think they, at first they're like, oh, the chest gets a little bit high, doesn't it? They're like, oh, I'm beating the pro. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not quite how it works. <laughs> from round four and five you're like there's levels to this <laughs> <laughs> the talk about your vengeance so that's your nickname I mean truly truly people talk about you, you hear it a lot being banded about you have a ridiculous engine absolutely ridiculous engine I mean that must be in itself quite off put into an opponent because like you yeah. say, you just yeah. grow over the rounds, don't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah it's, just, it's a weird one. Um, I've never, like, I don't, I've never seen it. Like, other people say, oh, you have a good engine. But to me, I'm just going at, once I feel good, I just, I just keep going. And yeah. like, I've got that sort of tunnel vision and I know what I want to yeah. do. And I, I'm just going to get it done. Um, I've never thought of my... I've never thought of that as being one of my sort of ace in the holes because wow. I feel like the thing I do best is adjust and and um, manipulate my opponent's weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And I think having a good engine definitely it it, it goes in my tide in, in the terms mm -hmm. of the fight. Yeah, mm -hmm. I watched that uh, William Warburton fight, and I just remember thinking. He's relentless. That is very annoying. But you can box as well. This is the thing. It's not like, yeah. like you just said, it's not just one little trick in your, your toolbox. I mean, obviously, genetically, you are a super fit person. But then on yeah. top of that, you, you've really got a, a boxing brain, haven't you? Yeah. Taking a while to get it to work, but um, it's, it's working now. So I'm not going to complain about that. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So what else have you been doing like, through, throughout the lockdown? Because I think I saw early on that you were doing some sort of fitness things. Are you still doing them or you thought, nah, I'm off it? <laughs> well, in the, first, in the first two weeks, it was kind of like a, a, a downhill slide mentally because you think, well, boxing stopped for now. And um, even if I'm training hard, there's, not gonna, there's nothing's going to come out of it. So... Um, yeah, first two, first couple of weeks of the lockdown, it was it wasn't good. It was just a lot of chilling about, feeling sorry for myself, feeling lazy and whatnot. Then I thought, um, you know what? I better start ticking over, and I could use this time to um, learn new things about, learn new things to do with boxing, and to better my technique. So I've got my uh, my punch punch bag in the garden. I've marked little little pressure point spots on the body and I practice targeting the, those spots and 
and just putting things that um, like my coach would normally tell me I need to work on. I've just been working on them. So when we come back to boxing, my coach went. My coach is one of those those coaches where I could have just won by a first round knockout, and he'd be like, "You didn't do this. You didn't do that. That was a crap performance. I'm not happy." So, I, so I've learned to be one of those people where I'm thinking, "I want to improve on this. I want to improve improve on that, so that I can have more of them rounds where I go to the corner and he's just there grinning, and he's just like." I don't have anything to say. <laughs> yeah. So you basically yeah. you're trying to please daddy. <laughs> well, well in, a, in a sense, yeah, because I, well, my coach, Barrington Brown, I look up to him as a boxer because he's nice. extremely skilled and um, he's, he's, like everyone in the gym will tell you, he's one of those coaches or boxers that he'll look at a person for half a round or maybe a round and then he'll tell you, they don't like this. They don't like that. If you throw this, you'll hit him. You'll hurt him. And sometimes in the corner, even before a match, like mm -hmm. with um, Andy Keats, I remember I was practicing a, a sort of a combo pattern on the bag, and he, he adjusted it slightly and told me what to do in that, in that pattern. And he said, that's going to win you the fight. And surely enough, that's, that's the combo that won me the fight. It was, um, it was just, just an annoying straight right hand towards the southpaw, and knowing very well he'd he'd um counter with his right hook and after the right hook target the body with a with a glancing but hard left hook and he was out. Nice. Yeah. So I, I can't it's coach. just one of those things. He's got he's got the brain for it. I'm learning how to teach myself how to how to gain that kind of um intrinsic knowledge and yeah, yeah. But to be fair, that's his job. And it's great that he can see all those things. He'll have a look, and it's almost like he takes a layer away and he sees what needs to be done. Your job is just to do it. So it's a yeah. great combination in, in, in a respect, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. But but even in the gym, he'll, he'll, he'll say that and he'll turn around like, I can't believe you didn't even see that. And, and us, <laughs> us guys in the gym are like, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> so it's kind of just like... Um, like yeah it's good but he wants us to be able to do that ourselves so we in the yes. gym we also go away and think about things more um critically as well it's interesting because um i can't talk very much about the pro side of things but in terms of there were two different types of coaches or they or they you know there used to be that sort of autocratic coach where you listen we tell you listen. And what's great about some coaches now is, like you say, they're giving you a more um, democratic type of um, coaching. They want to empower the athlete, which is yeah, um, yeah. a really great thing. Because like you say, if he's not there one day, mm. what what are you going to do? Do you know what I'm I mean? <laughs> Just like, if he, he's not in my corner, I'm not fighting. But then at the same point, he's trying to teach me to a point where I, like... Like, look, you've got all the tools. You might yeah. not, not know how to do it now, but if you learn, then you know how to do it. So, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to go back to a point that you made earlier on with regard to you not feeling um, 100%, you know, in the beginning, I'm paraphrasing, you know, in the beginning of the lockdown. And quite a few um, boxers have said on this, you know, they kind of were going full, full pelt, because that's what they used to, and now they've kind of slowed down. In a in in a um, on reference, does do you look back at that and think actually it's not done me any harm just to chill? Yeah, no, you know what? Um, like when I say I wasn't one hundred percent, it was it was the, maybe I was very disappointed that I couldn't box or the time that um we were having by ourselves, I couldn't kind of make an immediate impact like say oh, I'm going to use this this two weeks to get super fit just train 24 7 and then by the end of like say four weeks I can have a match but then there is no match so that's what was getting to me but um now now that I've turned it around it, I mean it's good I'm using it productively and I think um instead of going full pelt and burning out when you don't have a match in sight um it's better to because my coach, yeah, like I had a phone call with my coach and I was telling him, oh, yeah, so I'm going to do a 12-mile run on this day and this and that. And he was like, 
I told you, I, he was like, wait, stop. First of all, don't do that. I want you to to start everything like you're starting a camp from fresh. So instead of that 12 miles, do mm -hmm. two miles. I know you're fit, but just do mm -hmm. two miles. Then build mm -hmm. it up a couple, like every other day, add, a, add another mile onto it. Build it back up. You don't need to be going 100% um, right now because there's nothing you can do with it. And I want you to get a bit of rest, let let niggles um heal in that, and then so at the end of this lockdown, you'll be firing on all cylinders. It's absolutely a great piece of advice because what it also does, which uh, I think what a lot of people were missing, were, was the um what's the word I'm looking at um I the routine. Thank you. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm a creature of routine, so I think getting into the routine of just training or doing something every day definitely helps me mm. Mm. yeah I like, but then I, like that. I think it's about learning that that something doesn't have to burn me out yes at the, same, at the same time yeah yes so um you're doing your training you're ticking over great you've got your eyes slightly on uh, what's going to happen in the future but what else have you been doing in this time have you sort of learned anything new are you reading any books are you challenging your brain Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> have I learned anything new? Not per se, but I've, uh, I do a bit of mindfulness, like mm. meditating and that. That's mm. definitely helped. Mm. Um, I've, <laughs> I've done a lot of stuff ar around the house. I've built a wardrobe. I've built a sun deck chair. Oh. I have started getting into gardening. Um, just, just your typical DIY man. Yeah. So why did you start laughing then? Did you feel shame? <laughs> no, no. My partner was just laughing at me in the, in the background. What, <laughs> and did she say, no, you haven't? <laughs> oh, no, no, she's just laughing because it's true. <laughs> I was going to say, so I've got some work that I need doing. So if I leave the house and then you just pop around and uh, do the... Uh, I've got a table <laughs> that's been in the hallway for a year. Yeah. Not finished. <laughs> yeah um, in terms of the mindfulness then so you said you kind of uh um you sort of trying to practice that talk to me about that a little bit has it been again easier in this time to put that into a routine um yeah because i mean obviously with so much free time on on well my hands that yeah it is because um well my partner um owns a studio in nottingham called the reformer studio and within that, um, you, it's a reformer Pilates studio. So yeah. you're doing Pilates on reformer machines, but they also do Pilates classes, mindfulness classes, and yoga. And um, yeah, that's what made me get into mindfulness a lot more. Um, I think as a boxer, it's really, like, it is really important to have a grip on your emotions, how you control them, how you use them when you're boxing, um, how you use them in terms of build, the build-up to a match and, as well. Um, and also yoga is very good because uh, uh, us boxers are just stiff. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, it works. It works really well. But um, mindfulness over this time, especially more so because obviously it's a bit of a time where a lot of people are going through their own their own anxieties or dramas, whether it be it with business or or just money and how am I gonna pay for this? How am I gonna pay for that? What's gonna happen this week? What's gonna happen then? How is this gonna get sorted out? And people have lost the control that they they normally had. So getting a bit of mindfulness and being able to um kind of calm yourself down and being a good headspace is definitely good. Yeah. And actually, if somebody wasn't able to do that before this period, because you guys are always running at 110% all the time, aren't you? You know, you're running off doing the training, then you've got to do the tickets, then you've got to do a bit of S&C, then you've got to do... And everyone that I've been speaking to, they they don't have a lot of time, and this has given them lots of time. Yeah. Um, do you, in terms of you using your mindfulness before your fights, do you work with somebody that helps you, you know, do that, or do you do that for yourself? 
Well, like when we was at when I was on GB, we used to have someone that worked on worked with us on that. Um, I think as a pro, I've been doing most of it by myself. But uh, my recent fights, my partner, obviously working with the studio, has been doing mindfulness with me, um, uh, guided mindfulness on the build up to my fights, and that has really helped, um, especially, especially when it comes to that the last probably four or five weeks where everything's just getting a lot. Training's getting super hard. You're sparring every other day. Um, your body's aching. You're dieting. You're moody. Um, that's when it definitely sets you apart, like um, the mindfulness and gets you in a good headspace. Yeah. Do you know what was making me laugh inside then when you yeah. said that, yeah, so your partner really helps you with that in the lead up to the fight. To be fair, she does that for herself. Because I can imagine you, you know, <laughs> moody as hell. She's like, I tell you what, someone's getting it if I don't calm this man down. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, I think I think that's great though also that you can both get involved with that together as well. Um, so then she's very much part of your journey as well. Do you know what I mean? Which is great. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen quite a few of your... Uh, interviews and uh, you come across as a really really nice guy most of the things that I've seen you on you've been really nice now is it nice to be nice or can it be a hindrance in terms of selling yourself in the sport of uh, boxing uh, I thought I'm, I'm always at, at two two worlds with it because yeah I'm a nice person but I can be but some of my mates will describe me as that nice that nice guy, but I'm the nicest, like, bad guy that you'll meet. <laughs> like, I'm the nicest, like, guy that you don't want to get on the bad side of kind of thing. So, um, but at the same time, in terms of boxing and getting people on your side, it's, it's yeah, it is a bit, I'm always a bit, like, I do. Like, you never know which, which side to be on, because I am, like, in general, I'm a, I'm a happy person. I do enjoy boxing. I so yeah, there's a like a Jackal and Hyde, but um, I think just moving forward, uh, I just be more, just more myself, more vocal, just say what I have to say. Because I think before um, I was being nice, but I was being mm -hmm. over nice in interviews, and I was um, it's not really saying much and shying away from actually calling people out or talking about people and saying certain things. But now I just do it with a smile on my face, and if I piss them off and they fight me, that's all the better for me, um, but I'm just saying saying my truth, isn't it? It's true. I mean, I don't necessarily mean calling people out, but um, which I think is fine as well. But do you feel like sometimes maybe you didn't feel like you was in a position to do that? But now it's like I'm, I'm, I, I'm I've moved up a level, so I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like big up my chest, like yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm finally at, at that point where I can start calling this guy, like, tell yeah, this guy, right. look, I'm coming for you. Like, on a, on a real note, I'm coming for you. Because yeah. before, I mean, you could call people out. Like, say, before I got myself in the position for the English title or British Eliminator, I could send for people in the top ten and they'd just brush it off because they'd be like, yeah. well, who are you? Get in line, wait your time, and, like, maybe eventually you can get, you can get up here and uh, I'll take note of you. But now... um. I just thought to myself, you know what, instead of calling people out, get myself to the position where even where I'm being made mandatory to fight people, where the board want me to fight people, where people are actually asking for the fight, and then I can start saying, well, you know what, I want the fight, and uh, I'm here. Whereas I feel like some people are out there saying, um, oh, they're avoided, or no, or no one wants to fight them, or they're the best this, best that. But when it boils down to it, they're not facing people of that caliber so yeah i understand though and i kind of get both sides of the coin so um you know obviously the promoter wants the person to have an unblemished record it sort of um boosts the hype of that fighter etc and i was talking to someone the other day nathan actually um nathan haney Heaney, Heaney, Heaney from uh, around yeah. Mary, yeah yeah, so he was saying, which is, which, you know, I totally get as well, but it's like, if I'm going to fight you and, you know, you're, you've got this mad engine, you're technical, I might lose my own, there's got to be something in it for me. In terms yeah, of, yeah, definitely. You, you know, terms, financially. Like, 
Yeah. Like if, if, if there's going to be a risk in it, you want to get paid for it. And that, that's part of what I mean by putting myself in the position to actually have merit to call people out. Because it's all right when you're, it's all right calling someone out when you're, say, rank 25 and um, you know you can beat them, but like the fight's just not going to get made because you, you don't have the people behind you. You don't have the fans behind you. It's not going to be a money fight for that person in the top 10 to make it worth um, the merit of taking that fight. So I thought to myself, well, you know what? Like, you can't blame someone in that position because they want to progress. Like, and I've, as I've progressed, I've thought the same way. Like, you know what? I don't want to, I don't want to backpedal and, and box someone who isn't going to help me get ranking. I'd rather box someone up or box someone around my, where I'm at because then there's something in it for both of us. There's a reason why both of us will win out of it. Mm, mm. I mean, it just makes total sense, you know, I, and, and when you hear people going on and on about it in terms of, uh, let's say, casual fans, it's like, come on, it is, it's annoying, but it's also business, you know, yeah. somebody's putting their life on the line, of course I want to get paid out of it, that, otherwise you'd be an idiot, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. So I was talking to a couple of boxers over the last few weeks and they've been talking about, you know, number one, coming back and uh, going behind closed doors. How do you feel about that? And then I'll ask you the other, actually, I'm going to ask you the other question after. How do you feel about the whole uh, coming back and possibly fighting behind, behind the scenes? That doesn't bother me at all, as long as I get to put someone in the face. <laughs> no, no, like, seriously, um, no, it doesn't bother me, because if you've been on a small hall show, or you've been on some of these big shows before the main event, before the TV coverage, you, you're boxing in front of a more or less empty crowd anyway. Or if you've mm -hmm. been um, a good amateur, you've mm -hmm. been to certain shows, you're still going to be boxing in an empty crowd, or you're boxing... Um, in an arena in a country where people ain't really bothered about you. So even if the crowd was there, they, it, it, you could hear crickets go anyway. So um, you just learn, I think you definitely learn to just, just, just look at, keep your eyes on the prize and that's all that matters really. I mean, it, it, yes, I do get it. Um, when you're in a, when you're in a good fight and the crowd can get you going, but at the end of the day, as much as you want to please the crowd, you need to please yourself and sort yourself out. So, is yourself first. Mm -hmm. So, I, I was talking to Natasha Jonas, uh, I think it was last week. I've completely lost what day it is. So, I was talking to Natasha Jonas, and so this is not my idea. I have to give her, you know, props for it. But <laughs> we were talking about, um, you know, the fact that, number one, even if boxing comes back and it goes behind closed doors the fact that you won't be able to necessarily fly in opponents or sparring partners might then have a platform for 50-50 fights oh yeah 100% because um, cause obviously if you can't find like can't find tick over fights then it's going to have to be 50-50 fights and to be honest it probably works out better works out mm -hmm. better for the for the public, they'll see better fights. But it works out, like, for me, like, for instance, um, as soon as I won the English, I had a voluntary, and um, we could have taken an easy opponent for that, but I wanted to progress. I, don't, I didn't want to mill about and kind of go backwards in terms of my opposition. So I, we, we aimed at Tyrone Nurse, who were, a lot of people were like, are you crazy? Like, what are you doing? And we was like, well... I'm not, I'm not here to make, I'm not here just to be a number. I'm here to take over. So the 50-50 fights are good. In in my eyes, I feel, I feel it's a good thing because also myself as a boxer, I box better when my opposition is at such a standard. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, the bigger the challenge, the happier I am. So, yeah. Do you know what I like about that? And I mean, obviously, because I'm involved on the amateur side, I, 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 yeah, I'm going to say I prefer it in a respect because of that. Yeah. And that's what I would love to see because everybody is so frightened of losing these these days. Yeah, but um, I, that's that's like, it's kind of like, it's kind of something that the promoters have built up. Even the promoters, 
or the fan base. It's like as soon as someone takes one loss, they're yeah. like, oh, he's lost it, he's passed it. And it's kind of just like, uh, that's not the case. Like, yeah. like back in the day when boxers used to box each other, they, they'd lose one match, have a comeback match, and then they'd be back in contention for like a world title. And they would win the world title, and then they'd go on, and then it would kind of be the same. Like someone would lose, come back, win. The other person would lose, come back, win, and 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 even in MMA nowadays, um, they don't have that same mindset where you lose one and you're done. But yeah. you, well, you're not. It's just it's just boxing. If you're boxing good opponents, you're gonna lose a couple. But it doesn't mean that you can't. Doesn't mean that you can't revenge a loss or beat other good people. Yeah. Style great fights and that. Yeah. Maybe we should start pushing for that now. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be such a great thing for for boxing actually um, to have I those think, matches. I think with fighters, what it is is if if as a fighter you know, all right, I might lose this fight, but it won't matter if I lose this fight because yes. I'm people will still recognize I'm I'm a good fighter. I will still get chances. I think a lot of fighters would would be more likely to take more fifty fifty fights yeah. where as opposed to like carefully having to look at look for opponents because you're thinking, boy, if I lose this fight, I'm done. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's tough. It's tough to manage the business side of things where I'm guessing 99.9% .9 of boxers just want to fight. They just want to get in there and have a tear up, don't they? Yeah. So, what else have you learned about yourself during this time? You've had a long time to reflect. You know, what have you learned about yourself and what are you most grateful for? I'm most grateful for the people around me. The people that, the close friends, family, the girlfriend, parents, just people around me, the, all the support I have. Because I always say, I always say on my social media, like a little support goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is like, say, you're going through boxing and some people, well, the casuals, or some people say, oh, you're not, you're not going to do much. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. Um, oh, imagine if you fought so-and-so. They, oh, I don't know if I want to see you in that fight. <laughs> and, you, and yeah, yeah, you roll your eyes and you're thinking, oh, my God, not again. Know, but then you, you, get, you, get, you, get people, <laughs> you get those people that are close to you that, that just that push you on. And um, I, I have good friends. I have people that will call me up on stuff. They will make me stand up to what I say. So um, if you, like, they'll say it's not chat back day. If you chat it, back it up. So, like, it's just simple things like that. People that will hold you to your word, like your word is your bond, and that will push you, that will stand you up when you're feeling down and whatnot. Like, um, yeah, I'm grateful for the people around me. Wow. You've got a good team around you. And when I mean team, I don't necessarily mean coach. I mean... You've got a team, a family that, that, like you just say, that boosts you up. And they do say, just have those type of people around you and then anyone yeah. else that's not on your team, they can do. Sorry, so, so one of my mates was trying to ring me. <laughs> <laughs> he should be listening to this. <laughs> I know, he should be. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this has been really great. I'm so pleased for you. Oh, I'm oh. so pleased that you're, you know, um, on the next step of the ladder, oh, thank you're you. proof that how hard work pays off. And I cannot wait to see the next fight. I mean, please God, let's let's see some soon. I know, I know, I know. I'm here, I'm hearing whispers of ju end of July, and so I'm just I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping. <laughs> yeah. Well, until uh, until the next time, um, just yeah. Keep focusing. Shut those casuals out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you just keep doing you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. You're yeah, thank you. You take care. All right, you too. If you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber of Shadowbox UK, we'd love to see you. So please go ahead and subscribe now.